Hello and welcome. This is uh, Paul Sandu. So today on a wet and sloppy day, I am driving. I guess my viewers by now know that I drive a lot. <laughs> Actually, I like driving. You know, it's nice. You get in there. This is a space that you have for yourself, and it's a good time to you know think to meditate, to listen to scripture, maybe listen to some uh, music, some uh, praise and worship, and, uh, you know, just to give thanks to God. So, that's what I wanted to touch base on. A few topics, you know, whatever, uh, that's, you know, what's going on in our world. Something like this, uh, See, when there's a major news story like this coronavirus, there's always some agenda behind it, okay? And uh, the agenda essentially is to take that which... The agenda, there's always one agenda that's at work. Whether it's hiding the nature of our, the shape of our cosmology, which is, as the Bible tells us, the Earth is a flat plane, it's stationary, it's not flying through space, okay? The sun, moon, sun and the moon and the stars, they are simply lights that are embedded in the firmament, which is a solid roof above us, above which are waters. It's those waters above that make the sky blue. So all these truths, okay, they are in the Bible, yet they are hidden. Everything that this world, the information in this world, created by the God of this world, who was very, very good at information technology, okay? So he has like legions of servants, both in the spirit realm and in the human realm, that work day and night to keep us misinformed, okay? Therefore, don't expect any truth from the sources in the world, okay? Remember this one thing. When the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, okay? That it is talking about unseen intelligences that are at work. Human beings, like, you know, whether people are always looking at Donald Trump or, you know, Prince Charles or the Queen or the Pope or something, the human figurehead is inconsequential, okay? You could literally take, like, a rubber dummy and put them on the throne instead of the Pope or put him in charge in the White House instead of uh, the President and it will make no difference because it is not the people that are making any kind of decision whatsoever, the decisions are being made in the unseen realms, okay? And they are being filtered down into the realm of sight, what we see with our eyes. That's what is happening. So what I was telling you, like, you know, about the flat earth truth, you know, science tells you about the space. This is why there's been the last hundred, couple of hundred years, but especially in the 20th century, Hollywood is one of the major misinformation sources is hidden in the form of entertainment. That's why, you know, every year there's going to be some major movie about space. Like you have Star Wars, Star Trek, movies like Gravity and uh, The Martian. They're all stupid movies with hardly any story in them, okay? Stupid acting, but it doesn't matter whether these movies make money or they don't make money. All the God of this world cares about is to indoctrinate people that, hey, this is where you're living. You know, you're just flying through space and spinning and rotating and you're going sideways and upside down and downside up. All this is going on at all the time. When, you know, your own senses tell you that we are completely stationary. I ain't going anywhere. Everything is fixed in place, okay? That's what, there is no space out there like they tell you in science because there is a firmament above us. They can't penetrate that firmament. And how high is this firmament? It may only be like, you know, 20 miles up or something. We don't know. Like you can't trust any figures that are given to you by science. 
that is also true by all these other things so what it is done is what's the agenda behind it that hey we gotta hide the truth of God and his creation from these stupid people that's what the agenda is okay and this is also true in the case of this coronavirus or SARS or swine flu or you know bird flu or pig flu or you know whatever the heck Hong Kong flu it's like man everything like you know they keep coming up with these names they got all the legions like I said of people even like you know graduates from Stanford or Harvard or whatever from English you know they get recruited they get recruited by these agencies like the CIA etc and they're put to work to write these fake stories and come up with these fake narratives and these fake yeah they have like whole armies of them and that is just a fact so so the point here is that these folks that are in the employment of the God of this world whose name is Satan as the Bible tells us clearly you know they are always trying to hide God from us and in the scriptures we are told as for example in Matthew 24 7 and 8 that uh, you know there will be before the end times before the return of Christ Jesus our Lord there will be pestilences one thing there will be earthquakes there will be famines Okay, there'll be other signs that God is going to show that, hey, we are living in those days where the return of Christ is very near. Okay, we are not in those days yet. You know, the way, and I was in the 80s when I first got, uh, came to believe in Jesus Christ and I was born again. I thought, you know, like there's so many prophets, they teach us telling us that the end was coming the next day. And now I realize that it is likely that it will happen in the next, you know, 30, 40 years or something like that, but not so quickly as everybody teaches you, okay? That is for sure. That is for sure. So it may even be another 100 years. We don't know, all right? But the signs are that it could be beginning, like the beginning of sorrows could be sooner rather than later. So one of those signs, of course, is this corona, is pestilences, okay, which are diseases. So therefore, Satan already has, he knows the Bible better, like he quoted the Bible to Jesus, so he knows it. So what he wants to do is to attribute that which belongs to God and God alone, to his power and his power alone, to himself and to natural causes. So he is setting it up that when the actual pestilences arrive that are going to kill a lot of people, then people will not look towards God, but they will be looking towards the scientists. They'll be looking towards CDC and the who and all that kind of, yeah, who is the who? All right, that's a good question. Anyhow, that's what the agenda is, to hide your creator and his power from you. And don't you fall for these lies. Anyhow, as I was saying, what was I saying? Yeah, I was talking about, you know, that that is the real agenda, okay? Everything, eh, all the information, whether it's movies, documentaries, newspapers, CNN, any of those kind of places, the agenda always is to, uh, to hide the truth from us, the truth that we have a creator, the truth that this creation, that this... Uh, earth that I'm driving through it is the creation of the living God that's all it is okay that's what is the agenda that is the agenda another topic I wanted to touch upon was uh, so when you sorry to, to conclude with this thought here you know is that whenever you're looking at something don't base don't base your your understanding upon what you read in the news it's a lie it's a lie Study your Bible, get your King James Bible, get a concordance, get a dictionary, study that, okay? That is where you will get the truth. And when you know that truth, then you know you can, then you can understand these agendas that are being promoted heavily, then you can understand what is the reality behind it, okay? Not the exact reality as to, you know, who's doing and what's doing, who's doing what, that doesn't really matter. But what is the reason behind it, okay? It is simply, again, to hide the truth of your Creator from you and therefore to keep you focused on powers 
that are really powerless, you know, upon the human beings. That's why people are always talking about, you know, the president and the pope and the queen and the king and this and that, you know. They don't matter. They don't matter. They do not matter. Okay, get that through your head. They don't matter. Okay, they're just a, a, a person who's going to come and go, most likely into perdition, and that's it. And tomorrow somebody else will take their place. Hundreds and thousands of such leaders have come and gone. Okay, do you, did you see in the times of uh, Jesus, did you see him talking about the Caesar or what Caesar doing, what Caesar doing? Remember, Caesar was a big, he was bigger than the president is today. Okay, in that world, Caesars were bigger, the, the emperors, okay, than the presidents or the popes or the queens are today. Okay, did you hear Jesus talking about that? What is the Caesar doing? Did you hear the Apostle Paul talking about it? No, they couldn't care less what they were doing. They were, they were created for a purpose, which was to spread lies and disinformation and misinformation and to do evil in this world. And uh, to, that is, the, they were appointed to wrath. They came and they went. And most people don't even know that these people actually existed at one point in time, just as in a hundred years, you know, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or whoever the hell's, it won't matter. Nobody will care, okay? So stop focusing on human beings. Start focusing on Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Okay? Focus on the Lord our God. Isaiah 26, 12. Lord, thou will ordain peace for us, for thou also has wrought all our works in us. Yes, he has wrought all our works in us. He's also wrought the works in those evildoers too. He has. Okay? He has appointed them to that purpose. And they are just puppets in his hand as a Satan. He'll use them and then he'll get rid of them. That's it. But why would God do that? That makes him unjust. Well, you can try to get up with him when you see him because we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, right? You can question him that time. You know, you can put him on trial. But he already said, you know, it doesn't matter. His trial, he is going to be acquitted. He's going to be acquitted by others like us who understand that what he is doing is righteous. It is not unjust. All right. So I did want to talk about this other topic about Bible codes, numbers, you know, how people are always talking about like things like gematria. There is uh, uh, one of my listeners, you know, who sent me an email and, you know, written comments about a hundred times, you know, oh, you should talk to Marty Leeds 33, okay? And I watched some of these Marty Leeds videos. He talks a lot about the numbers and Masons and 33 and this and that. And you know what? Those are all of them are occult numerology. You will learn nothing from them. You will learn nothing except Satanism. That's all you will learn, okay? You will not learn anything else from those things. Therefore, I will say this to you, okay? That stay away from these people that teach this kind of nonsense. Do numbers exist in creation? 100%. Is everything based on numbers, as I've thought in many of my videos, especially the ones on the holographic nature of reality, that you know everything is a programming. The Bible tells us quite clearly everything was made by His Word. What is the Word? Word is a programming language. And what is programming? It's mathematics. It is. Well, where's the problem then about people that talk about these things, about Jamatria and everything else? They're talking about Satan's numbers. They're not talking about God's numbers, and I'll tell you why. The programming of God is so complex. It is so complex, okay? Like I'm looking at this tree and these blades of grass or my hand or my eye or whatever. Whoever created it, the complexity of this programming is so great that no human being or no angel or no devil can understand and compute on that level. It cannot be done, especially in the case of man. Okay, since the Tower of Babel, what did God do there? He confounded their language. Man was smarter before them. They had the technology to reach up into heaven like they were planning to do, which was some sort of, I don't know, what it was, like it was some kind of communication device, I don't know, some kind of whatever. That's what they had to do, okay? And it wasn't just a brick and mortar tower. There was more to it than that, okay? So, God confounded the language. Confounded means he corrupted it which means that we have nowhere near the computing power 
to be able to understand the complexity of God's programming is the Bible, the numbers in the Bible. Maybe there are, but you will not be able to understand it. Therefore, people that claim that they do, oh, I see the name of Donald Trump in here. He is lying to you. Get away from it. Walk away. Study your Bible instead of watching these stupid videos, you know, hour upon hour upon hour upon hour. Read your Bible. Don't even watch me. Read my Bible. Read the Bible. Yeah, I do a lot of teaching which is based on the Bible. And if you watch my videos and you study your Bible along with it, it'll help you. Undoubtedly, it'll help you, okay? But, uh, but, but, because it'll lead you to the truth. It'll lead you to Jesus Christ. That's, that's all. Godly teaching will bring you to God. That's it. All of this other teaching about what's Madonna doing at the Super Bowl and everything, it'll take you to Satan. That's it. Simple. Okay? Get it? So who do you need to be focused on? On what the devil is doing or what God is doing? Huh? And God's words are plain. You know, why do you need numbers? Oh, we need to study numerology to understand what's happening in prophecy. No, you don't. God's word is plain. There will be pestilence, there will be earthquakes, there will be famines, there will be, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Which are going to kill millions. Millions and billions. When that happens, you know prophecy is being fulfilled, right? Anyhow, thank you for listening. This is Paul Sandy.
Sí.